Hey there, Ink fans. Welcome back to my channel. It's Cass. What's up? Hope you guys are doing well today. I want to do a fun little painting of a rose today. And this is special for me because I want to do this tutorial on black Nara paper. It's totally new for me. I've only just received my black Nara paper in the mail a couple of days ago. And I've started experimenting. This is my second study on black paper. So it's totally new ground for me. So please bear with me, uh, because like I say, this is 100% experimental painting. I have never painted on a black Nara paper or a black surface at all with alcohol ink. This is 100% new for me. So, and looking at it, it kind of feels like painting backwards when it comes to alcohol ink, you know, because you're usually preserving your white spaces and darkening the darks. But here, you just need to not touch the darks and establish the midtones and the lights. So that's kind of an adventure and let's try that. So this photo before you is my reference photo. I got this lovely photo from Michelle Ka. I hope I'm saying her name properly. If I'm not, well, I'm very, very sorry, but thank you so much for this beautiful photo. I have enjoyed drawing it so much and I hope you guys will like drawing it with me. Soon I'm going to show you just the isolated flower because I'm really only going to use the one big flower that is right in front of us. The other ones I'm just going to cut right out of there. So let's look at the blossom. Okay, so here we have it. This is what our flower is going to look like. So first I'm going to show you this photo and I want you to look at it. And then I'm going to show you my finished painting. And then I'm going to show you my first drawing. Okay, here's my painting. And I'm going to show you the drawing that I made on this narrow paper. I made my drawing with white colored pencil. I want to make a little note about this because um, I find that regular graphite erases quite well off of white narrow paper, but I, I did not have the same experience with the black paper. My gum eraser that I use for everything, and I say my prayers to at night, uh, it leaves smudges on my black narrow paper. So I warn you, um, this is just a first timer observation, but I warn you to try not to make your drawing any more complex than you need to. Try not to make lines that you need to erase. So this is what my first drawing looked like in white colored pencil on this paper. I've tried to up the contrast so that it's a little more easy for you guys to see. I'm going to leave that on the screen for a moment and then we're going to uh, get this show on the road. Also remember with your drawing, if you do make lines that are mistakes, just leave them because they will wash off with the alcohol later. The act of painting this painting will wash the colored pencil off of this paper. So don't worry about it too much. If you mess up a line, just remember not to follow it later and probably the process of your painting will eliminate the presence of that line in the end anyway. So let's have a look at the colors that we're going to use. Um, the darks, or the dark that I used today rather, was rosewood, I used red pepper, I used gumball, I used snowcap, I used a little teeny bit of amethyst. That's because the really, really dark tones are a dark purplish red, like a wine red kind of, so I'm using a teeny bit of that amethyst mixed into my rosewood for my absolute darks. So you can see my palette here on the right. Um, I've arranged my color wheel in this, well, I, it's my palette. It, you may have noticed it's the color from the top of a planter, but you know what? It works just damn fine. It's like this was its destiny. So I've got this plastic quote unquote palette, which is black. I wanted to have a black palette for this black paper because I thought if I need to mix white into my colors to make opaque colors to paint on top of black, I sure as hell need to know how opaque it is and what it looks like on a black surface. So I've appropriated this tool to use as my new palette for painting, painting on black paper. So here I'm mixing up um, some light color. I, I think I'm going to start with my lightest tones, then I'm going to work on my mid-tones and go back and punch back up the light tones. I'm not really sure where I should start with uh, this black support, so I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. So here I've mixed up a color with white and with some gumball and some red pepper to make myself a nice bright pink color for the very, very lightest areas on the edges of the flowers. Because when we look at our photo, the very, very, very brightest areas are all along the tips of the petals. 
I'm going to pause here and show you guys a photograph, another photograph, because I have to admit for the greater majority of this painting, I was referring to a black and white version of my reference photo. That's not because I was not interested in the colors that they used, but it's mostly because I wanted to make sure that I was really following the tonal values and not just the color scheme. This is so, so, so important. It's really great exercise to use. So if you guys want to do that too, please feel free. Here is the black and white photo. Okay, there you have it. That's the black and white photo that I've been working from. So you can see where all of the really dark areas lie right around the central flower bud and underneath all of those little petals. So we're going to follow that scheme here. That is the photo that I'm primarily following. It's true later on in the painting process, I'll flip back to the color photo because I love colors and I, I want to look at the colors that are really in the photo and not just invent them all myself. But what's the most important here is the value distribution. So that's what I'm focusing on. You can see at the edges of these flowers, I'm using kind of a, a weird brush technique, but if you want to make this feathery appearance along the edge of the petals, hold your brush where the tip is just at the very edge of the petal, draw along the edge of the petal with the tip, and then go back along still with the tip at the very edge and just kind of scrub it back and forth all along the edge to make a nice, f almost frayed area of color. And you may be thinking, Cass, isn't it bad for my brush to use this kind of scrubbing motion? But I say to you, you know what else is really bad for your brushes? Alcohol ink. So you know what? If you're already using alcohol ink with these brushes, their days are already numbered anyway. So go ahead and use the techniques you want with them. And you know these brushes are not going to last for a long time. Anyway, it's, you're going to have to say goodbye. You may as well use them to your advantage in the meantime. So I'm just patiently going into all of my lighter areas. I'm going everywhere where I can see that it's particularly bright and shiny in my black and white photo. And I'm just taking care to go back and reinforce the very lighter areas because I'm noticing here with, uh, with this opaque ink, or rather ink that I've made opaque by adding white to, it can be really difficult to gauge how opaque it's going to be. If there's a little bit more alcohol in it, I notice when it's wet, it still looks quite opaque, but then it dries and it's nearly invisible. So it, I feel like there's quite a learning curve here when it comes to uh, these inks on black support. But I have to tell you, so far it's been really, really fun. I think it's 100% worth it. So let's continue. So I'm just going over all the the lighter areas on the petals. You're getting a feel for how opaque this ink is going to appear after it's dried on my paper. I'm trying to resist the urge to mix too much white in to make a really, really bright opaque color because I don't want to go too wild and then have to erase it out. So I'm just going really, really slowly and deliberately painting over the lighter areas, letting it dry a little bit, having a look at what it looks like adjusting that slowly 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 because this is, this whole black narrow paper thing is a brave new world for me i really want to become familiar with it but i have to tell you that i'm not familiar with it yet and i have a long way to go so like i said this is only my second study on this black uh, support so it takes a little bit of learning you can see on my color palette in the corner here i just keep mixing a little bit more red pepper and a little bit more gumball into my white ink mix in the center there. I just keep scooping a little bit more red in, a little bit more gumball in, a little alcohol as I need it, and feeding my palette as my colors start to run out. You can see the light tones in this painting are starting to come to life a little bit. You can uh, you can see how it's going to look. And I really like the, the time-lapse video as well because you can see how the ink looks as it's drying.
You can see here that I'm gradually starting to add more uh, dark colors to this opaque color. I'm gradually starting to add more red pepper and a little bit of that rosewood to darken it up. I don't want to make the transition too quickly from lights to darks. I want to do it gradually and incorporate more and more and more deep colors into, uh, into the mix. Be very cautious about the quantity of alcohol that you're using in your palette here. Um, if you still do not have a syringe, you absolutely should get one or an eyedropper, anything anything that you can use to meter out drips of alcohol at a time. It is absolutely essential because the ink has such a low surface tension and the alcohol has such a low surface tension that too much of it on your palette will go and touch every other color in your palette and you really don't want that. So just little drip by little drip of alcohol from your syringe is all you need. I found at this point that working with the inks was actually really similar to working with watercolors, which is weird because it doesn't absorb, but mixing the colors seems very, very, very similar. And I thought that was kind of neat. Here I want to draw your attention to um, how quickly you can see the solidity of the color diminish on this painting. Since it is accelerated a little bit, you can really see the rate at which those colors are um, becoming less pale. You can see I'll lay down an area of light color along the edge of a petal and then you can see it in the next couple of seconds just slowly becoming a little bit darker as that ink dries. So recognize this and work with it. Know that the alcohol in that ink that you are using and diluting it with is going to thin out the ink and it will diminish in its opaqueness as it starts to dry. Now it's time to shift gears and uh, go into our mid-tones here, which is going to be rosewood and red pepper, and again a little bit of that amethyst. We want that amethyst just to cool off our color a little bit. Yeah, it's mostly a red rose, but when you look at it, it's a very cool red. It's made up of many cool reds. It from cherry reds to wine reds, it is much more on the cool side than on the warm side. And that amethyst helps to just back off that warm color just a little bit. So I'm going in and filling in the dark half of each of these petals, or the dark portion of each of these petals, and I'm just butting right up against those light colors and letting them blend together a little bit, but I'm not trying to blend them over much. I'm not making much of an effort to blend. I'm just drawing that color along the inside of the petal shoom, in one fell swoop and then scrubbing that nice dark color right up until my light tones. Pay attention to where the darks in your reference photo lie because you don't want to traipse over top of those nice blacks. So be mindful of the very darkest areas and do not go into them. It's tough because we want to blacken the darks. We want to go back and and fill in the darks because ordinarily when we're painting with alcohol ink on paper, we're painting on a light colored support and you have to make the darks yourself. But here the blacks are already there. All we have to do is not mess around with them.
here I'm moving between my mid tones and my light tones. I'm developing some other lighter red and pink colors to join up or to marry my highlights with my mid tones, as it were. Yes, you absolutely do want to have some highlights on the edges of those petals, but you don't want there to be a clear and distinct outline or division between the light area, the mid area, and the dark area on these petals. So while I do not suggest you try to blend too much, I do suggest you use this, this scrubbing pattern with your the tip of your brush facing the outside of the flower to give that radial impression and to just soften up the division between the darker colors and the lighter colors. I've really been enjoying using these inks on uh, the Black Nera paper. It's interesting because it's different from any kind of painting that I've done before. It's very different from just painting with alcohol inks on white Nera paper as well, which is super cool. I like the addition of the white to lend an opaque quality to it. It's really, really neat. You never see alcohol inks like that, but all of a sudden they look creamy and textural. You can achieve all kinds of different um, textural effects that well, I don't even know how to achieve just with straight alcohol inks on white paper. It's really cool. I feel like this black narrow paper support is going to open up a whole new world of different kinds of paintings for me. I can't wait to try different studies on it, like uh, underwater studies. I can't wait to do, I want to paint uh, jellyfish on these black papers. I want to paint uh, lionfish, all kinds of cool things, you know different kinds of paintings that I feel would lend themselves really, really well to this sort of support. So I think that's going to be really fun. I can feel that my future contains a lot of narrow black experiments. At this point in my painting, I have stopped using my black and white reference and I've started using the color reference and I'm going to use it to reinforce um, both my lights and my midtones. I'm starting here with my lights. You can see I've got almost entirely und undiluted snow cap. I've just mixed a little bit of gumball and a little bit of red pepper in it to give it a nice salmon-y quality. And what I want to do here is I just want to pull out the very brightest edges, the very brightest areas on any of those uh, those flower petals that I want to emphasize. <laughs> Here I'm going to uh, shift gears after I'm done filling in the highlights. I'm going to grab my black Sharpie. If you guys have watched any of my other alcohol ink videos, you'll know that I really, really do dig a black Sharpie. It seems kind of like a cheat, but if it is, you know what? I don't care because I love it. That's one thing I want to share with you guys about this black Nara paper. Because, yes, the black Nara looks really dark and black and beautiful. It looks like the blackest black. But black ink on top of it is darker still. And black Sharpie on top of it looks just like Tim Holtz Black Ranger ink or uh, the Pinata Black Ranger ink that I have. I see almost no difference at all. And so I really uh, have enjoyed adding in the very darkest tones with my Sharpie here. And I encourage you guys to do the same. My painting looks so much better after I have added in a little bit of definition with... Uh, with my black sharpie, trying not to outline any le any leaves, any petals per se, but definitely when you look at your picture, look at where the deepest, darkest areas are. Look at where the hardest black lines are, and use your help your sharpie to help you out with that. <laughs>
I'm coming to the end of this study. I'm just fixing up my little finishing touches with my black Sharpie here, backing up some of the blackest blacks and uh, pushing back areas that I might have accidentally painted over. Sharpening it up, as it were. You can go as far with this process as you want or leave it out entirely and just work with your brush and not do the Sharpie at all. It's your world and it's you that decides. That's the beauty of it. I want to thank you guys so, so, so much for joining me today. I also want to thank Michelle again for this wonderful, wonderful photo that she's let me use. And uh, I appreciate it so much because I get to show it to you guys and, uh, and it helps us all. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for painting with me. If you guys did paint this rose, I would absolutely love, 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 love to see an example of your work. So let me know what you're doing. I am all ears. My time here has nearly come to a close, but uh, I invite you guys to join me very soon for my next few videos. I've got some really fun stuff planned, some fun paintings. I intend to uh, make some more bee studies for my great pollinators series on my uh, hexagonal Nara papers, which have got black and white, which is very, very exciting. I also have another fairy portrait to do, which is going to be super, super awesome. And I cannot wait to paint that and to show it to all of you. It's going to be super rad. Plus, I've got other Nara black adventures to share with you guys. So we'll have lots of goodies in store. Thank you so much for joining me again, and I will see you all next time. Catch you on the flip side.